With 2024 around the corner, I thought it was only fitting that I make this video featuring 2023's most notable shark attacks, ones that have made national headlines, as well as some lesser known cases. All of which, while tragic, serve as stark reminders of the dangers of venturing unprepared into the territories of these formidable and ancient marine predators. Hit that like and subscribe button if you're new. You're watching the most notable shark attacks of 2023. It's important that I note before starting this first episode that although most of the attacks highlighted in this particular episode, they actually happened in 2022, and although there are episodes that we will be covering shortly in this segment of shark attack cases that happened in these same waters in 2023, it's important that I mention that the reason the 2022 attacks are highlighted in this episode and are covered more in depth, it's because many experts have speculated that there's an evident pattern emerging in the way these shark attacks are happening due to factors like the culprit species of shark, as well as the proximity of the locations of each attack, respectively. In 2022, the serene beauty of Egypt's Red Sea resorts was tainted by a chilling string of fatal shark attacks, resulting in the deaths of two women. One victim was 68-year-old Austrian Elizabeth Sauer, whose horrific encounter with a mako shark was caught in graphic video footage. This disturbing incident and its aftermath were an ominous prelude to a much more recent tragedy which occurred just a mere 48 hours ago. Footage from various sources revealed the horror behind a tragic death. A 23-year-old man who had been swimming close ashore at the Dream Beach Resort in Hergada, Egypt, before being brutally attacked by a large tiger shark in front of multiple eyewitnesses. An event that has gone on to take the world by storm. But recently, many questions have arisen as to whether this rise in shark aggression in these regions of the Red Sea is merely a coincidental phenomenon, or whether these instances are part of a concerning pattern that seems to be taking shape. On a fateful day in July 2022, Elizabeth Sauer, a longtime resident of Egypt, was swimming near the popular tourist area of Sal Hashish when suddenly a mako shark attacked her, brutally tearing off one of her arms and a leg. As one horrified witness recounted, she's got no arm up to her elbow. The shark grabbed her and twisted her around. Sauer's desperate struggle to escape was captured in heart-wrenching video footage. She then swam towards the shore with bystanders throwing her a flotation device amid a rapidly spreading cloud of blood. The witness continued, Where are the rescuers? F she's covered in blood. An echo of the sheer panic and terror of the moment. The lack of lifeguards during this terrifying event prompted bitter complaints from horrified onlookers, and despite the best efforts of those who tried to resuscitate her, Sauer's injuries would prove too severe, and after being rushed to a local hospital, she would tragically pass away. In a tragic twist of fate, a Romanian woman in her 40s would then meet a similar end on the same day just hours later, her mutilated body being found less than a half mile from where Sauer was attacked, and her identity would remain anonymous. In response to these horrifying incidents, Red Sea Governor Amr Hanafi ordered a three-day closure of all beaches in the area. What's concerning is that the sequence of these fatal attacks is not an isolated occurrence in the region. In fact, over recent years, the frequency of shark attacks in the area has seen a worrying increase. In 2020, a 12-year-old Ukrainian boy tragically lost an arm and a leg in a shark attack. And in 2018 and 2015, a Czech and German tourist lost their lives in similar incidents. And in what is perhaps the most curious illustration of this disturbing trend, the Egypt shark attacks of 2010 stand out. The once vibrant Red Sea resort of Sharm El Sheikh was gripped in fear after an unprecedented series of five shark attacks occurred over five days. The tranquil waters, known for their abundance of exotic fish and stunning coral formations, were left eerily undisturbed, their lure overshadowed by the unfolding events. The air was heavy with palpable dread, with tourists warily patrolling the water's edge or seeking solace in beachside bars. Nina Dzinski, who was vacationing then, recalls the chaos that ensued as shouts of shark, shark, in Russian punctured the serene ambience. She was emerging from the water when the first attack happened. Her husband Yaroslav, who was still in the water, described a frantic scramble for safety. Muhammad Rashad, a barman at a nearby beach restaurant, had described bearing witness to the horrifying sight of a man running from the sea, his leg gushing blood. These attacks, so close to shore, sparked widespread fear and a rapid beach evacuation. 
In fact, many beachgoers, traumatized by the bloody scenes, would go on to pledge never to return to Sharm el-Sheikh. It wasn't long before authorities sprang into action, closing Sharm el-Sheikh's beaches and setting out to track and capture the shark, which was later identified to be an oceanic white tip. However, the measures taken by the authorities, including the capturing and killing of two sharks, did little to lessen the fear that had settled among the tourists. Now, despite the inherent risks of venturing into the water, unfortunately, only some of these people were deterred. Beachgoer Denise Rhodes had refused to let the incident ruin their vacation, and was a firm believer in accepting her fate as it was written, no matter what was in store. However, many more were cautious, their confidence rattled by the gruesome incident. This divergence in perspectives raises an important question. How much risk is acceptable when interacting with wild nature, and how can it be mitigated? And of course, as mentioned in the beginning of the video, and as many of you may know, the cruel twist of fate struck again in 2023, just days ago, when 23-year-old Vladimir Popov fell victim to a fatal tiger shark attack. As we trace the chilling string of fatal shark attacks in Egypt's Red Sea from 2022 and the most recent one in 2023, these incidents' striking similarities and shared locations prompt us to question whether these tragic encounters are somehow intertwined. It's conceivable that changes in the marine ecosystem or increased human activity in shark habitats could be sparking this increased aggression in these oceanic predators. The attacks could be a result of shifts in food availability, changes in water temperature, or even pollution levels that might impact shark behavior. So just days ago, in yet another recent shark attack in Egypt's Red Sea resorts, a woman was left in critical condition after being attacked by what was believed to be a tiger shark at Laguna Beach in Dahab, Egypt. Now, Dahab is located about 80 kilometers northeast of Sharm el-Sheikh, which is a well-known beach resort. It's uh, frequented by locals and tourists. Now, it's known for its beautiful beaches, its diving spots, but it's also a place where people usually come to relax and enjoy the Red Sea. It's extremely rich in terms of its marine biodiversity, so it attracts a lot of snorkelers and divers from around the world. And not to mention, it's it's a resort, so you know people love getting in the water. Like those are one of the main things that they like to do. Now, although the Red Sea is home to a variety of different marine life, it's also inhabited by several species of sharks. Now, these include reef sharks, hammerhead sharks, tiger sharks, and also mako sharks. Now, although we all know this and that this is the way it's advertised, shark attacks are very much rare. There are precautions that are taken naturally, especially when it comes to places that are like five-star resorts. You know, there's local dive shops often providing guidelines and safety tips for divers and swimmers, emphasizing the importance of being aware of your surroundings when you're in the water, and so on and so forth. Now, the woman who was unidentified, she was an Egyptian national from Alexandria. She was enjoying a leisurely swim with one of her friends in the warm waters of Laguna Beach, uh, as I prior mentioned. The day was sunny, and the beach was bustling with tourists and locals alike. Now, as they swam further from the shore, her and her friend, they noticed a large fish approaching them. Now, fellow swimmers in the vicinity, they initially mistook the creature for a large tuna fish, given the way it was moving and its, uh, and its size. However, within moments, the situation took a horrifying turn, as the large fish was in fact a shark. It's highly believed that it was a tiger shark, actually. Once it got closer, people recognized it as a tiger shark, and it targeted the woman, and it ended up biting into her left arm with such force that she was immediately incapacitated, causing her to lose consciousness just seconds later. Now, witnesses at the scene quickly realized the gravity of the situation and rushed to her aid. They used makeshift tourniquets to control the bleeding, and they managed to bring her back to shore. She was then immediately rushed to Dahab Central Hospital in critical condition, and given the severity of her injury, she was then later transferred to Sharm el-Sheikh International Hospital for specialized medical care. And then it was there that they had to make the difficult decision to amputate her left arm at the shoulder due to the severity of the injuries. Now, just days ago, something that literally seems like it was out of a horror movie occurred just off the coast of the Coral Sea. There's been a remarkable rescue of three sailors after sharks attacked their catamaran, causing it to sink in the middle of the Coral Sea. Well, this was just 500 miles off the Australian coast. Three sailors aged between 28 to 64. Uh, they were from Russia and France, respectively. They were attacked by sharks while aboard their inflatable 9-meter catamaran. The sailors had embarked on a journey from Venado, which is a double chain of 13 principal and many smaller islands in the southwest Pacific Ocean. It's highly volcanic and uh, corally, if that's a word, in nature. This region lays around 800 kilometers west of Fiji and nearly 1800 kilometers east of Australia. And not to mention 65 of these islands are actually inhabited, so it's not just no man's land. Now, these people were seasoned adventurers. They were very well equipped, and they had modern navigation tools and an emergency beacon just in case anything went wrong. So they weren't just inexperienced or anything like that. They weren't doing anything silly. 
And not to mention the inflatable catamaran is also considered a sturdy and reliable vehicle for uh, such voyages. Now, the incident occurred around 1.30 a.m., so it was a little bit after midnight, and the sailors experienced a sudden jolt, and then that one was followed by another, and then this caused significant damage to both hulls of their inflatable catamaran. So it wasn't just a nudge. It was soon evident that they were under attack, and this was not by human adversaries, but of course, sharks. And in fact, multiple sharks. They targeted the inflatable hulls, causing them to start deflating rapidly. So imagine you're surrounded by sharks, and then suddenly your vehicle in the middle of the night starts to fail on you and then you're close to joining them. Anyhow, so realizing the severity of the situation, the sailors deactivated their emergency beacon, which is when the Australian Maritime Safety Authority, also known as the AMSA, received the distress signal and they coordinated a rescue mission. So the quote-unquote Dugong Ace, a Panamanian flagged vessel, was then diverted from its original course to assist in the rescue. So after a few several tense hours, the sailors were finally rescued by the crew of the Dugong Ace. Now due to the psychological impact of something like that, of course they were visibly shaken, and not to mention their catamaran was also left partially submerged, so they were definitely going to join those sharks in the water. And in fact the hulls were even torn apart by the sharks when they were attacking. So the sailors were transported to Brisbane, where they're currently assisting an ongoing investigation, but of course authorities, they're puzzled by the sharks' unusual behavior, as attacks on inflatable boats are relatively rare, just like shark attacks on humans are advertised in general. And also the experts are examining at the moment the catamaran to understand what might have attracted these sharks. Just yesterday, devastating news broke from South Australia about a fatal shark attack on a 55-year-old local teacher who'd been out surfing with a group near Granites Beach, just south of Streaky Bay. We were at going toe surfing and going about our day to catch this new swell that arrived yesterday morning and I happened to get there just a couple of minutes after the incident. All that was there was a surfboard floating in the lineup, all the kids on the rocks and waving at me to alert me to the fact that I already knew there was something wrong well before I got there. Now as they caught waves and enjoyed their surf, the group had initially stuck together, which is of course a common practice and not to mention highly recommended one, especially among surfers, as it's widely believed that there is safety in numbers and that sharks, they're much less likely to approach larger groups of people. But unfortunately, in what turned out to be a fateful decision, the 55-year-old had for some reason drifted a fair distance away from the group. Now this action is what likely attracted the attention of what witnesses say to be an approximately 4.2 meter or 14 foot long great white shark, and just moments later, eyewitness Jack Martin would report watching in horror from a nearby cliff as the shark approached the surfer, knocked him off his board, circled back, and grabbed him in its massive jaws, and began thrashing him around for a few seconds before finally pulling him under. In addition to Martin, there were 8 to 10 other people, all of whom were in the water, that had seen and heard the commotion, some of whom were just meters away from the victim as he was being attacked. Attacked him from the side and uh, he, he went under once and came up again and went under again and, and that was the last that, that lad saw of him as he scrambled for the rocks. So within moments of the attack, Jeff Schumacher, who was a nearby surfer, he took immediate action. He was already on his jet ski, he headed straight to the scene hoping to assist the victim, but instead he would find himself face to face with the massive predator and would capture this now viral video courtesy of 7 News Australia. The big fish. You bastard. Just come back out here and I've seen the shark, but there's no sign of any person. I had a, a young fella from Coffs Harbour on the back of the ski with me and our surfboards and a, a foil and, and he, he got scared immediately. So I, after I've had the first little search, I took him into the lagoon and dropped him off and spoke to one of the local boys and said, where did you last see any commotion in the water? And, uh, a lad pointed exactly where it was and I went straight there as fast as I could and, and uh, turned the jet ski off. I knew the shark would come to me if I turned the ski off and just I, it, within a minute uh, it was a big female turned up at the side of the ski and I just circled with it for half a dozen circles. Figuring that there might have been some evidence uh, of a body close to the shark and I knew that I was very close to where it happened. I just watched and watched and there was, there was nothing more and the shark left me. I had to actually get out of there because a set came through. Another jet ski rocked up, a lad from Sydney and uh, he, we just kept looking for, for 10 minutes but couldn't find anything. So of course following the attack there was an immediate and coordinated response. Streaky Bay's emergency services were on high alert with police, coast guard and marine rescue units all mobilized sirens were blaring, which not only signaled a call to action for these units, but also they served as a warning of course to others in the vicinity that something major has happened. 
As of the most recent update, the search operation, while extensive, it's currently facing major challenges in the rescue mission, or at this point, it's widely believed is more of a recovery mission for a proper send-off or burial. So helicopters, boats, and jet skis were all mobilized. They were operated by professionals and also local volunteers. Unfortunately, this latest update says that due to unfavorable ocean conditions, it was announced in an article from ABC just hours ago that search and rescue missions have been temporarily paused. So given the known presence of sharks in these waters, there are protocols for such incidents that happen. But of course, the size of the Great Whites involved adds an extra layer of urgency to the operation. So local fishermen, with their knowledge of the area, they are assisting uh, search teams with their valuable insights on where they could possibly find the shark or where the shark may be found if it was sighted before based on the location of the attack. So the beach is temporarily closed and nearby beaches as well, and advisories are being issued, urging both locals and tourists to stay out of the water until it's deemed safe. Just days ago, in the waters near Adelaide, South Australia, a free diving session took an unexpected turn when 32-year-old environmental science student Bridget O'Shaughnessy was severely bitten in the face by a great white shark. Just saw the, um, the boat come into the shore and at first we thought it might have been a drowning with one of the, the aqua kids. We were looking at it like it's a school thing and the boat's come in. Now Bridget and her dive partner, Brian Gordon-Peters, they were free diving at Port Norlonga Jetty a spot that's well known among local divers for its clear waters. Now, although sharks have been sighted in these waters, they are by most accounts infrequent. But nevertheless, it's still important to note that the area's waters are home to a variety of potentially dangerous species of sharks. But sightings of great whites, like the one that attacked Bridget, they're reportedly not common in this area. So this makes her life-threatening encounter all the more unfortunate. You're very exposed in this area, so it's just one of those things that it was, you know, we kind of thought it was inevitable it was going to happen at one point. So as Bridget and Brian were immersed in their dive, they were free diving off this reef. The great white shark emerged without any warning or provocation, as they typically do, they're ambush predators. The shark targeted Bridget, and in the blink of an eye, it went on to deliver a severe bite to her head, face first. So it was at this point that Brian had to think quick, and he would heroically intervene by managing to what he described as push the shark away, a move that in hindsight likely played a key role in saving Bridget's life. We got out of the water, walked back along the jetty and yeah, I think there were about five ambulances, maybe four police cars and a few fire engines as well. We heard people screaming like because people just screamed for fun but then like... Yeah, we, we realised that something obviously yeah. bad had happened. And then we like saw the ambulances yeah. and then the tent. And yeah, it got pretty then... serious pretty quick. We just saw some fella yelling at them to like get out of the water and to help them. Some of the kids did see it, we've bit talked to a few of them and they're saying they saw like her face is all bloody and stuff. So an emergency response team, they swiftly rushed to the scene as a traumatized Bridget was immediately rushed to Flinders Medical Center. There she underwent two surgeries to address extensive injuries, nerve damage and to remove the multiple shark teeth that were embedded in her skull as a result of the brutal attack. Meanwhile, the police, they evacuated the beach and uh, their efforts, they were focused mainly on locating the elusive shark. They tried to do this by air as well as by water, but with the vastness of the ocean, of course, it was very hard to find the shark and the search was called off shortly after and it proved futile. Now, this incident at Port Nolanga, it's not an isolated event by any means. It adds actually to a growing list of shark encounters in South Australia's waters. It has seen over 1,100 reported shark bite investigations since 1791. And as a matter of fact, when we talk about recent times in 2022, the country recorded the second highest number of unprovoked shark attacks globally. And while fatalities are rare, the threat remains real and unpredictable. And this was demonstrated by the tragic death of a man outside of Sydney Beach earlier that year, the city's first fatal shark attack since 1963, in fact. And while specific statistics for 2023 are not readily available, the trend observed in these recent years suggests a rise in shark attacks in Australia, especially given the rising number of incidents throughout the last two decades, which I'm about to get into. Now, in response to the increasing frequency of shark encounters, local authorities have intensified their monitoring of the beaches, safety measures and public advisories are being reinforced, urging both locals and tourists to exercise caution when entering the water. And despite the surge in recent attacks, the South Australian communities, they stand united in ensuring that safety is their number one priority. So nearby schools, the students had the day off. It's called a pupil free day in Australia. And plenty of these students were in fact in the water when they saw the rescue boat come to shore. And of course, many of them didn't even know that this was a shark attack. They just assumed it was a drowning. However, shocked students then witnessed the woman's severe injuries and they realized that this was much worse than what they anticipated, at which point patrols would keep a close watch following the attack. They swept the area, they checked for sharks, both by air and water, 
And of course, they made sure the beaches were closed and that swimmers were swimming on the other side of the water if they were going to swim. And many of them didn't even go waist deep after that. They were just staying in the shallow and being very cautious. You always think about like when you're down at the beach, like there's going to be sharks, sharks and like yeah. you never think that it's when gonna you're going to be, gonna you. be there, <laughs> like it's going to happen. But obviously today yes. it's happened. Just yesterday, a family's serene vacation in the Bahamas turned tragic with the news of a fatal shark attack involving Lauren Erickson Van Wart, a 44-year-old woman from Massachusetts. It's heartbreaking. It really is. I mean, these poor people, they probably looked forward to this vacation for months. Now, this latest incident, it occurred near the Sandals Royal Bohemian Resort in New Providence. Now, this is a location renowned for its picturesque beaches, tranquil waters, and diverse marine ecosystem. The waters around it are home to a variety of shark species. Now, among these species are the nurse shark, which are generally known for their docile nature, and the reef shark, which is commonly found in shallow waters. But the thing is that these waters are also inhabited by larger species like the bull shark and the tiger shark, which of course, as we've covered in different episodes, uh, just as of the most recent one as well, these species especially, they're notorious for their potential to be dangerous to humans. And of course, it's also worth noting that the presence of the majestic but formidable great white shark, although less commonly sighted in these warmer waters, cannot be entirely ruled out. Now what you're about to hear are details from investigative reports based on key information from a lifeguard who was present at the scene during the time of the attack and would also happen to witness it. Now in the early hours of Monday, December 4th, 2023, Lauren, along with a male relative of hers, were paddleboarding about a mile off the coast of the beach at the aforementioned Sandals Royal Bohemian Resort. Now as they navigated the gentle waves, Lauren abruptly decided to drift away from her companion, perhaps seeking a moment of solitude or maybe a different view. Now the subtle shift in distance, seemingly inconsequential at the time, like the attack that happened in Streaky Bay, Australia, where a surfer named Todd Gendel was presumably eaten whole after he'd separated from his group while surfing just off the coast of the bay. I'll leave that episode for you at the end screen of this video in case you haven't seen it yet. And South Australia, in fact, has been seeing an increase in the number of attacks, even though that part of Australia is not really known for shark attacks as much as, say, the west or the northern parts of Australia are. An unassuming and now pretty much isolated Lauren was at this point struck by what the lifeguard on duty later described to be a massive shark from below, knocking her off her paddleboard and going on to inflict severe bites to her lower torso, resulting in massive bleeding and quickly turning the water around her blood red. The lifeguard, who'd been frozen in shock by what he was seeing, would then snap into action and hop on a rescue boat and rush towards Lauren, where he'd then rapidly bring her onto the boat and attempt to administer CPR. But tragically, Lauren's injuries were fatal and she'd already succumbed to her wounds. In response to the horrifying incident, the Royal Bahamas Police Force and the resort's emergency team quickly went on to secure the beach and halt all water activities. Now this event has brought even more attention to a sudden recent spike in shark attacks in the Bahamas, which of course is a very famous spot, I'm sure it's not the first time y'all have heard of it, and it's a place otherwise not known for seeing many of them. It's very rare, it's obviously a tragedy whenever it happens. Bahamas is a very sharky place in general, it's been a shark sanctuary now for over a decade. Bahamas isn't typically a place where you see a lot of white sharks, which would be feeding on seals at the surface. Activities at the surface can be riskier because you're not actually able to see in the water as well and see what's swimming underneath. But there's there's nothing particularly dangerous about paddleboarding in the Bahamas at all. It's just a real fluke incident. In fact, they're so rare here that according to the International Shark Attack File, a database which tracks these occurrences on a global scale, there have been approximately just 33 confirmed unprovoked shark attacks in the Bahamas since 1580. It's also highly worth mentioning that in the past year, the Bahamas has seen an uptick in the total number of shark attacks that have been reported, especially in comparison to its historical numbers. During this time, the Bahamas has witnessed three major shark attacks, two of which were fatal. Just weeks prior to Lauren's encounter, a German tourist who'd been on a diving expedition was reported to have disappeared following a shark encounter, and despite strong search efforts, was tragically never found, and authorities would conclude that he was assumed to have been predated on during the encounter. And not to mention in June, another harrowing attack occurred when a scuba diving woman from Iowa suffered severe injuries in an attack, resulting in the amputation of her leg. And then finally another fatal incident last year, where an American tourist was tragically killed by a shark while snorkeling. Just days ago, the serene coastal ambiance of Mila Kay, a picturesque beach town in Jalisco, Mexico, 
was shattered by a harrowing shark attack, claiming the life of Maria Fernandez Martinez Jimenez, a 26-year-old marine biology graduate and mother to a five-year-old girl. Now, in what seems to be a surge in recent shark attacks globally, all of which we've covered here in recent episodes, which I'll leave for you at the end screen of this video for those of you who aren't aware, reading about this latest incident was quite emotional, especially as a parent myself. The story really hits different given the details, and I guess I kind of just wanted to put that out there before jumping into the story. So on Saturday, December 2nd, 2023, Maria and her young daughter arrived at the serene Melake Beach, located just west of the Manzanillo Seaport in Jalisco, Mexico. So not long after arriving, they changed into their swim gear, and just minutes later they entered the warm waters and began swimming to a popular floating playground about 75 feet from shore. Now upon arriving near the ladder at the base of the playground, Maria tried to help her daughter onto the platform, at which time she was abruptly struck by a powerful force from below. A large bull shark, considered one of the most aggressive and thus dangerous of all shark species, attributes which are largely owed to their high levels of testosterone, it managed to clamp its jaws around her leg, inflicting lethal injuries and leading to massive bleeding. Now Maria's daughter, who was shocked by what she was witnessing of course, she was frozen solid right next to her mother as she was being attacked, and knowing very well that her child was also at risk, the courageous mother would at this point, likely with the help of a surge of adrenaline, manage to lift her daughter onto the playground and out of harm's way, likely saving her from an attack as well. Now it's also highly important that I note that since this incident just recently occurred and reports aren't exactly clear on how the incident unfolded, I did also, while researching this case, read an alternate report telling the story slightly differently. Now this specific report, it said that as Maria and her daughter were swimming to the playground, Maria suddenly noticed a large shark in the water and thus attempted to rush her daughter onto the platform in a panic, an action which caused the shark to ultimately attack her instead of her daughter. So although the result was of course the same and Maria did end up losing her life regardless, I did think that it was important that I mention this alternate report just in case the details do turn out to have some truth to them. Now as her daughter's screams and those from eyewitnesses pierced the air, rescuers were quick to arrive but would just moments later declare Maria dead and her injuries prove fatal. A distressing video would then surface on social media not long after the attack, capturing the aftermath of the tragic incident. It showed Maria, lifeless and being carried away from the Pacific Ocean to the sandy shore by rescuers. Now in this horrifying footage you can hear off camera, the voices of bystanders echoed in disbelief, with one in particular shouting, she's lost her leg. Now not to mention this harrowing moment, it unfolded as a swimming race was going on just nearby, adding a sort of surreal contrast to what is otherwise considered a fun and peaceful event. Authorities swiftly went on to close the beaches in Malake and the adjacent town of Barra de Navidad to swimmers and were also of course forced to halt the aforementioned swimming race which was ongoing during the time of the attack. In what was the fourth major shark attack reported this month, this one going viral just yesterday, that's December 12th, 2023, the serene waters off the coast of central Queensland, Australia, on what was supposed to be a day of exploration, turned into a harrowing tale of survival for Matteo Mariotti, a 20-year-old marine biology student. Now this incident, although it was made public just yesterday, it actually happened on December 8th, so that was last Friday, a day which already started out as a tragic day for Matteo. And with the sun casting its golden hues over the remote 1770 beach on that late afternoon after a heavy rainfall, Matteo, not long after having received heart-wrenching news of his grandfather's passing, decided to take a swim in the waters around the headlands at 1770, and he'd do this right by a waterway to help clear his mind. Now according to Queensland locals, this particular spot can get pretty risky for a swim, especially after rainfall, conditions that cause things like food to get flushed into the sea from the waterway, which in turn tends to draw in sharks looking for a bite. And this increased his confidence that the conditions were right for swimming which is when he donned his snorkeling mask and took a small camera, hoping to capture some video of the serene underwater world, a practice that had become second nature to him. But this tranquility had turned to terror when in the midst of his swim, Matteo suddenly felt a sharp, unbearable pang in his foot, the pain engulfing his entire leg in a matter of seconds. A shark, unseen and unexpected, had attacked, sinking its teeth deep into his ankle and attempting to drag him out to sea. In a bid to save his life, Matteo then managed to grab the shark's head, and aided by a surge of adrenaline and quick thinking, he then used all his might to pry open its massive jaws, freeing his leg. Although he knew that at this point, the damage he'd sustained was severe, and that from the knee down, there was nothing left. 
Bleeding profusely and in shock, Mateo began to swim frantically back to shore, his muffled screams echoing underwater as he fought to reach the beach, where his friend Tommaso, a nurse and diving instructor, would receive him as a still rolling camera captured what Mateo thought were his final moments. Tommaso sprang into action, essentially saving Mateo from the clutches of death. Upon receiving him at the shore, he proceeded to help slow the bleeding down and contacted rescuers right away. A helicopter would arrive at about 5 p.m. In the first seconds, it was really panic for me. After that, I tried to think, to thought what I have to do, and I tried just my, my best to save him. I didn't want to go inside the water. I just told him he's Maybe it was dangerous. I was yelling me many times to help. I tried to put something on his leg because in, at the first moment I saw that leg was up. Matteo, who'd lost consciousness during this time, would then be carried by Tommaso on his shoulder to the stretcher as soon as the chopper arrived. This is quite serious, quite daunting to look at. He had a bite on his ankle and a bite, you know, mid below his knee. So he had two really major injuries. Due to the severity of his injuries, doctors were forced to amputate Matteo's leg, stating that doing so was a necessary medical intervention in order to save his life and to prevent future health complications. Now, in regards to the species of shark that attacked Matteo, Queensland Ambulance Services' Martin Kelly was quoted saying, It's not yet quite clear what kind of shark it was that attacked Matteo, but one thing's for sure, there's a lot of different sharks out at the moment. People are seeing bull sharks and tiger sharks around, so it had to be a reasonable sized shark, especially from what I saw of the bite. But also, it doesn't really have to be a big shark to cause an injury, particularly around an ankle. And to further reinforce his remarks, drone footage shot last week at Agnes Water, which is about 10 kilometers from 1770, shows dozens of sharks circling near the shores of the same waters that Matteo was swimming in when he was attacked. Determined to overcome this challenge and to help with the medical costs, Matteo went on to set up a GoFundMe page, which I'll leave a link to in the description of this video, and thankfully he's been garnering support from people around the world, while his story continues to serve as a stark reminder of the commencement of what is known globally as peak shark attack season. So as mentioned in previous episodes, there is a peak period in shark attack incidents every year that begins in November and ends in April. During this time, attacks are reported left, right, and center, and remember, plenty more go unreported. So shark attack statistics, like I've said many times before, they're not very reliable when it comes to predicting numbers of attacks, and they should always be taken with a grain of salt, meaning precautions and proper swimmer safety is a must. Now hopefully these recent incidents are not a sign of things to come, because so far this year, this seems like one of the more busier starts to shark attack season if you will, and here's to hoping we don't see an uptick in these incidents as we near 2024. And as I mentioned in the beginning of this video, this is the fourth major shark attack to occur in December alone that has managed to make national headlines, now I've covered the first two fatal ones in detail in recent segments, as well as one of the major non-fatal ones that happened in Port Norlanga. I'll leave them all for you at the end screen of this video for those of you who aren't aware of them yet. And that other non-fatal shark attack that happened, it in fact happened in Queensland as well, just a week ago, when a man was reportedly torpedoed by a bull shark, resulting in a bite to his shoulder while diving on a remote Great Barrier Reef island near Cape Melville. In 2022, there was in fact a very low 57 unprovoked shark attacks reported for the year. But it is highly concerning that based on the rate of attacks happening this year, that number looks like it may come closer to the average of 70 incidents reported over the last five years. This is Animal Al. Stay safe out there. Till next time.